Please stand and let us sing opening hymn 439, 439 in the blue hymnal, What Wondrous Love Is This? Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. 
you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm for this evening is a portion of Psalm 116. We will read it responsibly by whole verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fill my house, Lord, in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am his servant. I am your servant and the child of your name. You have freed me from my I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He said to Simon Peter, who said, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. So Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew he was, who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. Yet I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I give you a new commandment. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me with the word desperately needed to sustain life, and let me speak in the name of God, the Father and Mother of us all. Amen. Amen. So, at this point, I'm pretty much just a Christmas and Easter trumpet player. I have the best intentions of practicing year-round, but life happens. Next thing I know, it's a week or two before Christmas or Easter, and I have to get that sucker out, get my chops back, literally find my face again. It wasn't always this way. In my late teens and early 20s, I would play for hours upon end every single day. I went to a college that was small at the time, and it had an even smaller music department, and I was on trumpet scholarship, which means they kind of owned me. (laughs) 
I was in every single ensemble that they had that involved trumpets. I was expected to be because I was on scholarship. And uh, I would occasionally play with the choirs as well. And um, on top of that, we had to practice and practice and practice. Indeed, the practice, the hours alone in a practice room were probably the most formational of the experience. We were encouraged to, distu- to study the way professional trumpet players performed. I even had one jazz teacher that encouraged us not only to transcribe other trumpet players' improvised solos, but to watch videos of them, to stand like them, to hold the horn like them, to move like them, and breathe like them. The idea being, the more we identified with them, even going so far as to imitate them, the more we would perform like them. In a lot of ways, that is what we are about through Holy Week in general and the Tridrium specifically. As we walk these great three days, as we experience the giant liturgy of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the great vigil of Easter, We liturgically do the things that Jesus did. None more so than tonight, this night. On this night, we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist. We celebrate that as St. Paul writes. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. We offer our sacrifice at this altar, and we eat this sacred meal from this table because Jesus did. We practice to remember Jesus' leadership method, Jesus' exercise of power through willingly dying on a cross. We consume the taken, broken, blessed, and given body of Jesus so that we may be taken, broken, blessed, and given to a world in need. Tonight, we also wash feet. And yet another liturgical example of experiential learning, of liturgical identification, we will get down on our knees and wash feet. Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, said something interesting in his Palm Sunday sermon in 2023. He was talking about the incarnation. The fact that God enters our world and walks with us in the form of Jesus. He said we must see how our world is remade by a God who enters its time. Who walks with us. Learns with us. A God who places himself at the, who paces himself to the length of our stride. That's a marvelous image to ponder on its own. The notion of God pacing God's self to our stride. And yet, Bishop Williams goes on to say, but to follow him, we have to learn to pace ourselves to God's stride. That's what we are doing tonight as we wash feet and celebrate the Eucharist. We are practicing pacing ourselves to God's stride, to God's leadership. We are learning to serve each other by practicing the way God serves. So my dear friends, come, join me. Let's wash some feet. Amen.
After the bidding to wash feet, those who wishing to participate, I invite you to come down the center aisle and make two lines. We're going to have two stations here. The way this works is you get your feet washed first, then you wash the feet of the person behind you. Does that make sense? Excellent. Episcopalians want to know in what order to do things. I'm just trying to help you out a little bit. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example. But none stand more in need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward, that I and we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. But come remembering his admonition, that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
Prayers of the people are found on page six in your bulletin. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and for our clergy, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord. By thy grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Regard not the sins of your church but allow our prayers to rise up to you like incense and be pleasing to you. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated.
Welcome uh, to the Holy Trigium, the great three days. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things that tonight after the Eucharist, there is one more thing that we're going to do. We're going to strip the altar, and you're invited to help with that. The altar gift will be hanging out by the sacristy door, and so you just come up, get things, carry it to them, and they'll put them away where they need uh, to be. Also, you'll notice that there is no dismissal at the end of the service. That doesn't mean you have to stay for three days. <laughs> what it means is this is one giant liturgy that we do on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the whole great vigil of Easter. And so there isn't an ending. It just, we just go out and we come back. Um, so see you here tomorrow night, uh, 7 p.m. for the Good Friday service, and then Saturday at 6.30 p.m. for our great vigil of Easter as well. And now, let us celebrate the Eucharist. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a sacrifice for all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted up high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Psalm 22. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer by night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of the wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. 
may your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord, he rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. 